where you are, just close your eyes and raise your hands and say, Lord, you are so, so good to me. I'm still breathing. My heart is still beating. I still have a place to stay. I have food to eat. God, you are so, so good. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It is Tuesday morning again. Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. And what an honor and a privilege to be in His presence once again this morning. I pray that wherever you are, let the glory of the Lord fill your house. Let you experience His presence like never before. I believe that the word that God laid on my heart is a word for you or maybe for somebody else. So please share this broadcasting, share it with your neighbor, share it with somebody. Somebody is waiting this morning for a word. They are waiting for a word from the Lord. So share this word this morning. I greet you in the lovely name of, of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We had an amazing Sunday. Sunday was Mother's Day and we had a powerful service. And it was all about a woman who, who are persistent. You have to be a persistent man and woman. You know, it is so important. Um, the Lord spoke about his, the Mary of, of the mother of Jesus. Mary. Mary was a woman who didn't take no for an answer. When the wine was running dry, and the containers were running empty. All what she said is, Jesus, the wine is finished. She didn't talk much, but he could read her attitude. You know, there's power in your attitude, whether good or bad. There is power in attitude. And she had a good attitude, but she was persistent. Jesus, I know that you can do something. He said, Mother, my, it is not the time yet. My time has not come. And she turned around and she said to the workers, the servants, she said, just follow his instructions. She was persistent. And it's time for us to rise up with authority. It's time for us to rise up with boldness. It's time to rise up with a word. Not lots of words, but a few words can change everything. You know, yesterday, I was so busy with the book of Job. And while I was reading about this wonderful man, Job, as a man who knew no sin, he had no sin in his life, a man of integrity, a man who was wealthy, a rich man. He was an owner of thousands upon thousands of cattle. He was a father of 10 children and they were such a close family that every time when there was a birthday, of 10 times a year, 10 children, there were 10 birthdays. They celebrated for days. It was such a happy family. And Job, he was the intercessor of his children. He could pray. He could pray day and night for his children, repenting for their sins. Maybe he said, they, they cursed the Lord. Maybe they did something wrong. But I will intercede for them and I will pray for them so that God will forgive them. And never Job knew that his time was test of testing was on the way. Job's time of just testing was here. The time of testing came with a speed in his life. And all of a sudden, his summer was over. And he was in his winter season. When I read this, the lyrics of the song came to my mind. When the music fades and all is stripped away. You know what? The time of music is an amazing time. It was a time 
of feasts, birthday feasts. It was a time of money flowing in. It was a good time in his life. But all of a sudden, there was no more parties. There was no birthday party. It all stopped because his children died. The animals and cattle died. The buildings burnt down. He was stripped of everything. When the music fades and all is stripped away. It is a very, very, very lonely time. And nobody can help you then when everything in your life has been stripped away. No more music. It is you and you alone. No more voices. No more joy. No more laughter. No more music. You know that silence can also speak. Silence can also bring a message. So everything was quiet and silent. And Job ended up on the ash heap. His body was covered with boils from head to foot. He was covered with boils, sitting on the ash heap scratching himself with a piece of pottery. You know, this man who was so wealthy, this man who had everything that you can think of, everything that a man can desire he had, even his garments was woven of gold and everything in his house, I believe, was made of gold and, and germs and you could find everything that a, a, a rich man could desire and all of a sudden we see another picture a picture of a man a sick man his body is covered with boils he has nothing left he was stripped of everything in his life even his pride there was nothing over nothing left over and here he sat and his friends visited him can you imagine the picture? No wonder the word of God says that his friends visited him. And for days they just stared at him, saying nothing. They couldn't believe the picture of this rich man turned into sorrow, into poverty, into sickness and into to disease. And some of them came and they had lots to say. You know, so many times in your life, when you go through the desert, when you go through that difficult time, and when times are dark in your life, they can either stay away from you, or they will come to find out what are you doing and how you are, just to gossip about you, <laughs> telling stories about you. Or they can just say nothing. Just You can just see the look in their eyes and the expression on their faces. And some of them accused him. He's a sinful man. And he couldn't say anything. He couldn't defend himself because there was no sin in him. He couldn't defend himself, he was not like a city under fire. Because of all the words, because of all the accusations and false accusations against him. And he said, Rather count my steps. Rather count my steps than looking and searching for my sins. You see so many people in life, so many precious ministries were destroyed by people and the enemy. Mighty men and women of God were destroyed because people are waiting for one step, 
one wrong step. They will never ever look at the steps that they're taking for the Lord. Ministry is not easy. And we are all human. We are all human. We are not perfect. And so many times ministries were destroyed because of people just looking for the sin of the man and woman of God, but not looking at the steps that they take in. And so this man, Job, was saying, in his sorrow, in his rejection, he had nothing left. Children were taken away from him. He was stripped away. He had nothing to offer God. Nothing. There was nothing. But you know, God had a plan with his life. And so many times you go through hard times. You say, Lord, I don't know what is going on now. I don't know what is happening. Yesterday was a good day. But today I'm battling and I'm suffering. Because I didn't realize when I opened my eyes this morning that I would be in the desert. But the Lord knows what he's planning for your life. You see, and soon, and very soon, you will see the change coming. You know, even Job's wife turned against him and she said, You are a man of integrity. Just leave it, man. Curse God and die. But Job said, I know that I know, and I know that I know that my Redeemer lives. You see, the Lord is searching for something much deeper inside of you. The Lord is not looking at anything that this world can offer you. He doesn't want your money. Everything belongs to Him. He doesn't want anything from you. He wants the deeper, the deep and the deep. He's searching for the deeper things inside of you to offer him. The world might curse him. The world, the world might turn against him and say, Lord, if you are a good, good father, how could this ever happen to me? But the Lord says, the Lord says, I will allow sometimes, like in the life of Job, Things to happen to you, not to destroy you, but to give you a better end. While the enemy is busy with you, the Lord is preparing behind the scenes something far better, something much more better than you've ever had before. But he had to prepare you, to prepare you for something better. He had to, to allow the enemy to strip you, to strip away all these things, so that in the end that you can be a better person. You know, it is so amazing. The word says, the, the lyrics of the song says, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. No matter what, Lord, it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. Job's end was amazing. He ended up on the ash sheep. But after the Lord prepared his way for him and he counted his footsteps and he directed the footsteps of Job in that terrible condition, he gave him a better end. Job said, my Redeemer lives.
I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. You see, Psalm 30, verse 4 and 5 says, Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise His holy name. His anger lasts for a moment, but His favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may go on all night, but joy comes in the morning. Psalm 30, verse 11 says, You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy that I might sing praises to you and not be silent. If you're sitting in the ash heap this morning, scratching yourself, just start singing. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the afternoon. Praise Him in the darkest hours. The Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life, even more than in the beginning. And my last words to you this morning, my friend, is, hold on, my friend. Joy comes in the morning. It's still winter in your life now, but summer is on the way. The Lord sent me this morning to deliver this message of hope. He sent me this morning with a message, although it's still winter, or you know you're still in the desert. The oasis is on the way. Just move forward. Although you're still in the winter, summer is here. It's on the way. My friend, hold on. Hold on. Joy comes in the morning. Have a blessed and an awesome week. In Jesus' mighty name, and always remember, I love you. God bless you.